a healthy mind. Hello and welcome to this evening today on Togetherness Media. This is Anthony Powers live from Los Angeles and we're so excited and happy to have you guys here with us today. Stay tuned for an amazing show. Welcome back to this evening here on Togetherness Media. We have an amazing show for you today. We're talking about self-love, self-care, and selfishness, and when the three combine and when which is which. We're so happy and exciting to share our perspectives and share those perspectives of some amazing professionals with you today. Right here we have Ellie. How are you doing today, Ellie? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm, I'm divine, you look lovely this evening. Thank it's great to having you here today. Yes. We're gonna throw you guys to some music. We hope that all of you are loving yourself and remembering that life is a dance no matter where you are in life. From the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep, even your dreams should be choreographed by the divine. So we're here with Bonnie. I'm so happy to be back in the studio today and with Ellie. And we're gonna bring in Coach Bonnie, Master NLP, Hypnotherapist, and Life Coach. We're so excited to have you in today with us. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have the show with you two today. So exciting to see both of you. Good afternoon, Dr. Bonnie. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So nice to be with you both. Thank you. Yes. Likewise. That was a beautiful song and a, and a very nice introduction to the topic that we're talking about today. Yes, we're so excited to have you give us if some insights. I'm just going to adjust my okay so i can see your face uh feel no. free we were like we're so excited to have you give us a little bit of insight today the, the on those time of covid and doing everything from home 
Yes. We go with the glitches. <laughs> exactly. You know, we, we take life and we make adjustments as life goes and we continue moving exactly. forward. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, we're talking about? We're talking about self-love, yes. self-care, and selfishness. And when the three intertwine and when the three disentangle. And we'd love to have your insight um, on, on this subject. So, it's very interesting that all three, as you said, get entangled with each other. Yes. And sometimes we even uh, have a difficult time distinguishing which is which. We tend to think about self-love as being selfish. Mm -hmm. We say it, we, we don't care of ourselves because we think it's selfish. So let's, let's talk about each one separately. What Please. is self-love? Self-love is when I accept all of me. The good, the bad, the ugly, the virtues, the weaknesses. I accept, I acknowledge that I have some good qualities and not some good qualities. It's not that I'm not going to approve upon them. It's just accepting what is. Okay? And then the second one is differentiating between your identity and your behavior. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we tell each other, we tell ourselves, I'm stupid. I'm a failure. I'm, I'm no good. You see, what we put after I am, it's the most important two words in the universe and what you put after it can make or break who you are mm. so differentiating and separating the behavior from the identity for example we all have fingernails right but we don't call ourselves fingernails we don't say i am fingernail same thing goes with the behavior that we do so when we say that I'm stupid, reframe that to, I made a not so good decision, or I wasn't really clear about my decision. So separating the behavior from the identity. The identity should always be positive, should always be empowering. It, when we put a negative next to I am, the subconscious mind goes to work in order to make that happen. The subconscious mind is like, uh, if we are the uh, CEO of the company, the subconscious mind is the employee. Whatever we tell it, the subconscious mind does. It's like a faithful servant. So if we say something negative about ourselves, the subconscious mind says, hmm, she mm -hmm. wants more of that or he wants yeah. more of that so i'm going to provide yeah. more of that into her life yeah often often yeah often uh equated to if you're on a boat um if you're at the, if you're steering the subconscious mind will become the rudder it'll steer you in the direction you, our words our words will steer will will make will make the movement at the will and our subconscious mind begins the rudder guiding the rest of the ship exactly Exactly. So we need to be very careful about how we talk to ourselves. Really. Yes. Careful. The next one is to have a purpose. Mm. What motivates you? Do something good for yourself. Wake up with motivation in the morning. Have an inspiration. Have aspirations. Look forward to doing something. Have a purpose. And then not just have a purpose that is a dream take action towards your uh, purpose, your goals, your outcomes, your uh, wants and desires, okay? Now, the next one is quieting that critical mind, that chatter that we constantly have with ourselves. Sometimes the way we talk to ourselves, we don't even talk to our enemies. We are so critical to ourselves. That voice that comes out of nowhere when you are doing something and says, are you sure you can do this? You're not good enough to do this. You're too skinny, you're too fat, you're too tall, you're too old, you're too young. All of that doubt 
full of things that the mind is bringing up for us. That, that chatter that goes inside our mind. Quietly that. And be uh, aware of how we talk to ourselves. The next one is to uh, have the ability to self-preserve. What does that mean? That means that be able to say no and be able to say yes. Mm-hmm. No is not a rejection. Even if I love you, I can say no to you. When you say no, make sure that your no is not out of resentment, out of anger, out of frustration. And when you say yes, make sure, check in with your body, okay? And see how it feels. Do I want to do this right now? Maybe tomorrow is a better time for me to do this. Maybe I don't feel like doing it and it doesn't feel right with me. It's not in integrity with my values. So no is a complete sentence. And when you, go ahead. May I one thing also, when we say no, make sure that our no's not out of unrational fear. Um, exactly. That's a, exactly. that's another very important thing. So many times yes. people say no to yes. things in their life because they fear them before they even happen in this unrational fear. I always very, say fear is the mind killer. Important. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is a uh, goal killer. Fear is stops us from moving forward. Absolutely. Yes. So make sure that when you say no, definitely it's not out of fear. Absolutely. Next one is to have to live by your values. What are your values? Mm. So values are the ones that are uh, important to us. Things that are really, really uh, exciting, purposeful, and they mean something to us. Okay. So identify what your values are and then do your best to live by your values. When you live by your values, the yes and the no comes very easy, okay? You, can, you, have, a, you have a compass, you, can, you know when to say yes and when to say no if you are living in integrity with yourself and you live with your values. Yes. Beautiful. Um, Should I go on? There's more. That's a beautiful way to say it. It's it's been very valuable information so far. Um, (laughs) The last part, so the third part of this is selfishness. And um, sometimes, which call it, sometimes... uh, Before we go to selfishness, there are two points in self-love. Forgiveness, forgive yourself. Oh yes, that's essential. We make That's mistakes. What you said don't, don't, uh, no matter how much you have guilt, shame, resentment, you can never change the past. We can only yes. learn from the mistakes we make. And then from the learnings that we have, then we can move forward. So forgive yeah. yourself. Yes. And be grateful for whatever you have. Mm-hmm. Now, selfishness, uh, self love before we uh, segue to self, uh, selfishness, self-love is, is expansive. It includes everyone. I love myself and I love you. You're not inferior, you're not superior. I see you as my sin. Mm-hmm. Okay? When someone has self-love, they also respect and love others as they uh, see themselves. As you're talking that John Legend lyric of uh, Come on, you know, like all of me loves all of you, all your curves exactly. and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Um, exactly, all your perfect and imperfections. Beautifully said. Thank yes. you for that. Yes. So that's self love. Now, selfishness is when I value myself more than I value you. No, I love myself more than I love you. I feel that I'm entitled. Mm. I feel that my wants and my desires are more important than yours. So I violate your boundaries in order to gain what I want. Mm. 
and oftentimes find in selfishness is not even a full love of self. It's sometimes just a love of a part of a, a part of a of self that's identified with that strokes certain parts of the ego when the other parts of the ego are incomplete when other parts of the self love are incomplete. Sometimes I find that oftentimes people are selfish to overcompensate for a lack of self love. Absolutely. Like the for narcissist, lack of right? What is missing inside? Exactly. For, for the lack that what, what is missing inside, whether it be self esteem, confidence, self love, all of that that I'm lacking, I'm projecting onto you and I want that from you but mm. not in a compassionate way, in an exactly. arrogant way, in yes. an entitled way, okay? Now, and it, it also come, oftentimes comes from uh, a lack of understanding the abundance of the universe. It often comes from a lack mentality, uh, believing that yes. there's not enough for everyone, that there's only enough for me. And if, and if I don't have it all, if I don't have, you know, I have to make sure I have it. If I don't have it, I won't get it. Like it's uh, oftentimes exactly. comes but make it once again from that fear based mentality. Yes, it comes from scarcity. Absolutely. Self love yes. comes from abundance. Selfishness comes from scarcity. Yes. And that is why that the mentality is a me mentality, not a us or we mentality. It's, mm. it's all about me. Yeah. If it doesn't affect me directly, then I don't care. As long as I am safe in my personal universe, as long as I have everything that I ha want in my personal universe, I don't care about you. Yes, and it's no, uh, I love the words that you mentioned, the word scarcity. Uh, as an etymologist, I look at how the word scarcity also combines with the word scared, which deals with fear and also goes with the word scarred. So many yes. people, time, so many people with the scarcity mentality, they are scarred with being scared so that they and think there that- there are no accidents in the words. Oh, never. They, they have the same root. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge student of etymology, so uh, like I always pay attention to that. Yes, yes. All of that, from being fearful, from lack, all of it. And I, and I feel it inside of me, but I'm hiding it by, by being arrogant towards you, by bullying you. Mm. Now, the, the, the extreme of selfishness mm. goes into narcissism, which is all of the ones that we said, uh, in addition to not having empathy for others. They, I mean, it's, it's actually a mental disorder. It's it's the, it's a disorder. Mm. Uh, so they have no um, way of expressing their feelings, and they literally cannot understand other people's pain. They 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 disconnect from it. Okay, and they always want. They, they have a feeling of inflated self-worth hmm. and they exaggerate their successes, their accomplishments. Yeah. They are constantly in need of um, validation. Validation. It's validation. Yes. And they want to be praised, whether justly or unjustly. Hmm. <laughs> and... Um, and the, the, one of the most painful um, characteristics, the signs of a narcissist is lack of empathy. And that mm. makes it extremely difficult to live with a narcissistic person. Yeah, that was a word that Ellie kept on bringing up when we were talking about selfishness earlier. Yeah, like a narcissism. Yeah. But the thing is if they would know the selfish people they would know how would be the self loves would create more happiness and more success in every angle of their life i think that would be more fantastic to go towards loving yourself because if i love about myself it doesn't matter i'm short or i'm 
fat or I'm skinny or whatever that's how I will see the in the others it doesn't matter what color they are what height they are where are their nationality is or what is their sexism is you know uh, they would love everybody yeah. and that's what the, that would make the universe much prettier yeah oh, one of yes, the things I always think of when I look at a narcissist is uh, in Greek mythology uh, the origin of the story like Narcissus he was someone who became so enamored with himself that he sat there looking at his own reflection in the pool until he died he see page that's he was so myopic in his vision and in his scope that he would only look at himself and not look at anything else and um, am, I, am I right in that in that story that he was so infatuated with himself that he kept looking at himself the reflection of himself in the water until he fell into the water and drowned exactly and that's what happens with <laughs> narcissists that's exactly. they become yes. so enamored with themselves and only staring at themselves and not the world around them and they become consumed and they drown in their own ego Unfortunately, they yes. can see anything else other than themselves around them. Yes, yes. And I now, believe that if we can, if we can train the selfish person to see beyond themselves, mm -hmm. and somehow be able to feel the lacks inside, because what the selfish person does when they feel the lack. They go outside for their uh, indulgence, for their mm -hmm. happiness, for for immediate gratification. I want more of this. I want a bigger car. I want my car is bigger than yours. My house is bigger than yours. Okay. It's all about collecting, accumulating things so that I can be happy. Can you give us a, a really quickly um, the biggest difference between self-love and selfish? I would say the biggest one is the me mentality versus the me we mentality. Yes. It's expansive and limiting. Yes. Self love is includes everyone. Selfishness it just includes me. Includes inclusivity versus exclusivity. Exactly. exactly. Beautiful. Yes. And then also the and then the exclusivity they're always looking for ex uh like like external external validation versus internal validation beautiful yes when you have the internal validation from yourself you don't need anybody else's validation you don't wow. need to collect uh, and accumulate external things in order to feel successful to feel happy to feel accomplished you are by yourself confident competent and content yes uh we thank you so much dr bonnie it's been such a beautiful and enlightening conversation and we're sure I everybody out there around the world listening with you you uh, added so so many great points and i appreciate you and i look forward to doing more programs with you too thank you so much i look forward thank to you. it as well thank you so much coach bonnie it thank was a you, fantastic Eddie. and i appreciate all the moment thank you so thank much thank you thank have you have a great night and thank, thank you, you for having me and then you as well and make sure to reach out to dr bonnie her numbers on the bottom of the screen she's out there and, and if you need personal help in your life she's there rather it be as a nlp as a hypnotherapist life coach the beautiful insight she gave us here today she can give it to you personally make sure to take this opportunity to reach out to this wonderful enlightened woman thank you so much doctor thank you thank you, thank you very much thank you. A healthy mind requires balance and balancing the wheel is your guide to finding more happiness 
healthier lifestyle and a successful practice in whatever you do. I'm Dr. Daniel Sadiq, author of Balancing the Wheel, and you can find it on Amazon under balancingthewheel.com slash book or in the audibles in audiobooks.com. Mm-hmm.